Good evening and welcome to our annual retrospective in which the year's crucial and international political crises are pushed to one side in favour of the grimy tabloid sex scandals. In the news this week, following the ordination of women priests, fears are expressed that the church may have opened its doors too wide this time. <laughs> At the end of a disastrous year, Fergie tears up her wedding dress in a fit of rage. <laughs> and in the light of the club's appalling drink-drive record, Arsenal strikers arrive for a disciplinary hearing. <laughs> Apologies to those of you who may have tuned in to see Alan Corran and Clive Anderson. Alan Corran has sadly been called abroad on urgent family business, and Clive Anderson is busy washing his hair. <laughs> Both of them. Well, um, oh, what, can, uh, what can one say about uh, Ian's guest tonight that isn't libelous? The man who's done for celibacy what Bill Wyman hasn't, Stephen Fry. <laughs> And on Paul Merton's team, a comedian who takes half his name from a shoe company and the other half from a boxer, Lillian Bruno. Sorry, Frank Skinner. <laughs> so, Nick is away, round one. Two combinations of news footage from this year's news. Can you possibly identify the stories? Ian and Stephen, what's in a phone call? Um. Uh, I don't know. It's the sort of thing that tabloids spend their time writing about. I, I don't read it. I have no idea. Right. I know we have a royal family, but I never read any more about <laughs> Something Not to do with them. Have mm. they um, had another child? No, it's... Um... <laughs> <laughs> well, it's the Gold Blend couple, isn't it? Oh, is it something about yeah. Andrew Morton being called an anus horribilis or something? <laughs> yeah, this is part of the conspiracy by John Major to cover up um, his incompetence. Whenever he's doing something particularly useless, they announce that the um, royal couple are to uh, separate. They're not. They are. <laughs> oh, why? <laughs> Do you like Angus's tie? It's very brown, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I knew it was a mistake. <laughs> it's the uh, it's the squidgy conversation. Uh, although if Diana's squidgy, goodness knows what Fergie is. <laughs> Uh, voice experts were split over the tape, although American experts were satisfied it was Diana's voice. They probably said, that's English all right, it sounds just like Dick Van Dyke in Mary Poppins. <laughs> uh, Paul and Frank, name the day. Uh, this is, uh, Norman, this is Bl Lamont. Black Wednesday, presumably. This is, uh, Norman Lamont. Oh, this <laughs> that's, uh, that's the freshers off license manager being disciplined. <laughs> Or the, uh, the Noel Edmonds show has been brought back mm. to BBC. Yeah. <laughs> sure. mm. uh, yes, it is uh, that terrible Wednesday engraved on the minds of everyone in the city, the 8th of May 1942, the day Norman Lamont was born. <laughs> at, uh, at the time, a Downing Street source said, we do not use words like crisis. Yes, they don't use words like sorry, mistake, or we made either. <laughs> Uh, Ian and Stephen, out, uh, out with the old, in with the slightly older. <clears throat> I think there was an election earlier this year, and... Um, Nothing gets past you, does no, it? No, <laughs> <laughs> And the Labour Party, um, <clears throat> terribile dictu, uh, lost. <laughs> and... Um, <laughs> and there were some scenes of various celebrities who'd supported them looking rather sad. Mm. Yes, all right. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> Uh, obviously, yeah. it was a Black Thursday for us. <laughs> uh, Neil Kennock lost his job after trying to win an election on the absurd policy of raising taxes and was promptly replaced by the man who thought of it. <laughs> uh, just before the election, Labour had the slogan Neil Kinnock Prime Minister printed on 10,000 mugs. Nice of the party members to agree to be tattooed like that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Mentioning, uh, mentioning no fries, names, yeah. sorry. Uh, Paul and Frank, a crock of gold for you. Um, I think it's got something to do with El Dorado, mm, isn't it? Possibly, yes. Which is? Which um, is a, a TV series which someone said looked like pornography without the sex. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. But I wouldn't know, of course. Mm, no, never having watched El Dorado. Indeed. And... Mm. Um, <laughs> 
<laughs> but Jonathan, and, and Jonathan Powell, whose idea it was, has now left the BBC and has gone to Carlton Television. Yes, we thrilled. Jonathan Powell moment. is also responsible for Trainer. <laughs> that was a cracker, wasn't it? <laughs> They're very fashionable with young people, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> We've got a lot of explaining to do <laughs> after the show. It could take some time. It is uh, the disastrous start to Julia Smith's El Dorado, or as it was nicknamed at the BBC, Alberto Square. In, in August, the uh, viewing figures of both El Dorado and Panorama fell to a disastrous 2.8 million. El Dorado immediately decided to have Fizz walk out on Bunny, and in the next series of Panorama, David Dimbleby is going to be murdered in the shower. <laughs> Uh, William Hills are offering uh, 33 to 1 on El Dorado topping the TV ratings next year and 5 to 2 on Charles and Diana having another child. I wonder what the odds are on the uh, Queen Mother winning the Embassy Darts Classic. <laughs> <laughs> Which uh, She's been putting a lot of practice in. <laughs> <laughs> She's Jockey keen Wilson to get the title good. back. <laughs> <laughs> Which... Uh, Specious supposition brings us uh, triumphantly to the end of our initial piece <coughs> and the glorious news is that uh, the two teams have put in faultless performances as both Ian and Stephen and Paul and Frank have a spectacular four. Round two is now briefly shelved as our seasonal caption competition takes centre stage for a quick airing. Ian and Stephen, here's yours. Uh, Paul and Frank can have this. So uh, let's reinstate round two as our primary concern as we embark on a grubby return to the year's more sordid exposés. Paul, your uh, classic banner headline. Toe job to no job. Your Isn't this a reference to the <laughs> villain in Goldfinger? The big guy. <laughs> Wasn't he called Blow... No, um... <laughs> I don't... Is this David Meller? <laughs> David Meller was in Goldfinger. He was one of the gadgets. <laughs> was he that lathe that, uh... Oh, don't be ridiculous. Lathe? <laughs> 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 That wasn't bloody laser destroy. It wasn't a lay. Yeah. <laughs> they were going to make him a set of keys, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Take Mr. Bond to the light engineering yeah. factory. <laughs> <laughs> that lay. Yeah, I'm thinking of Dr. No. He will show you the oh, meaning mate. of metalwork. Don't worry about that. Mm. It's quite untrue. It's yeah, not or, or it's job even, at all. I mean, every even, time you open the paper or turn on the telly, there's Meller again. Meller on Clive Anderson, Meller in The Guardian. She's in my Guardian, actually. He's writing a column on opera. In your garden? No. What's <laughs> <laughs> going on? It's all going on. What is going on? I'm terribly sorry. I felt sorry for him. I said, will you come and write a column on opera in my garden? So I don't want him in the house, obviously. I mean, got the wife and child in there. <laughs> he's got Bamba Gascoigne in his shed. <laughs> Developing a new series. Mm. It is uh, the Mellor scandal and uh, all its ramifications. Uh, Antonia de Sancho revealed all to the tabloids. I filled the bath with warm water and bath oil, she said. By the time David and I got out, the water was cold. That was what our relationship was like. <laughs> cold, oily and making a skin wrinkle. <laughs> It was uh, later revealed that Mella had uh, close links with associates of the PLO. The public shame and embarrassment was considerable, but the spokesman for Yasser Arafat said he soon got over it. <laughs> Frank, another extract from the Dictionary of Modern Quotations. It's Paddy Pantsdown. <laughs> yes, this was um, Paddy Ashdown's secretary um, had to leave because it was found that she was having an affair. In fact, in fact, he gave her the opportunity to stay on, he said, but she blew it, which sounded like a pretty good exchange to me. <laughs> <laughs> His um, solicitor's office was raided, you know, in one of those coincidences that happen <laughs> when burglars go in, get into the safe and find the only document about the private life of the leader of the Liberal Democratic Party. You're turning into <laughs> a bit of an old cynic, aren't you? <laughs> You are. <laughs> you could be right. <laughs> it's, uh, it's Liberal leader Paddy Pantsdown who uh, in February owned up to a five-month fling with his former personal assistant, uh, Tricia Howard. She told reporters, you have to learn when to keep your <coughs> mouth shut. <laughs> yes, um, <laughs> your, uh... <laughs> you remember that joke about how, how do you get um, four Liberals on a bar stool? You turn it upside down. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, I didn't. How's it go? I can't remember. Uh, I'm hopeless at jokes. Right. You carry on. Uh, 
Stephen, uh, the tale mm? of an amicable split for you. Mia said she would gouge out my eyes. Good Lord, how, how did you get hold of this one? This was um, bizarre, this was about a year ago, I think. I um, was in New York and I, ha I was giving a dinner party uh, for <laughs> was it Mia Farrow and um, her husband, who's a film actor, Woody Allen. And um, <laughs> is that t I'd put the, you know, the meat in the oven the way it, and I'd, mm. um, as always, you forget the potatoes till the last minute, and I was <laughs> peeling them. And I handed them to her, and she said she'd gouge out the eyes. <laughs> because I was in a hurry. But uh, no, there was something about them they, sp splitting um, up. Over had you back to dinner? No, no, not at all. Oh, damn. Um, no, I think it's because I went to bed with all their children. <laughs> <laughs> I was wearing. <laughs> I didn't seem to like that. I was wearing no. glasses and kneeling, and I thought, <laughs> she might have thought that it was Woody. That's what I thought. She, she might yeah. have just thought that I was Woody. Mm. Um, it, is, uh, it is Woody Allen and his affair with uh, Mia Farrow's adopted daughter, Soon Yi. Mia Farrow described 56-year-old Woody's affair with her young daughter as disgusting. When she was that age, she didn't have any elderly boyfriends. Her 50-year-old husband, Frank Sinatra, wouldn't allow it. <laughs> uh, Ian, the usual tabloid reverence. <coughs> Baldy and Andy talk cash. Oh, yes, this is a reference to John Bryant, who I believe is bald. Very good-looking, distinguished man, too. <laughs> and, um... Yeah, unlike most bald people. <laughs> <laughs> Quite, yes. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. And Andy. And they're talking about um, Pat Cash, who's going to have Fergie next. <laughs> So it's true. Uh, yes, it is. It's, uh, it's Fergie, the royal family's answer to Sue Pollard, and uh, her dalliance with Johnny Bryan, who was initially appointed as her financial advisor. At the time, he explained, the Queen herself has insisted that I get involved at all levels. <laughs> Obviously, uh, starting off with her feet. The, uh, the topless photos of Fergie <laughs> were featured in a number of publications. Experts said they appeared to be taken from uh, 250 yards away, behind Fergie, using a wide-angled lens. <laughs> uh, Fergie and Brian won damages in a French court for the invasion of privacy. Their lawyer said, never before have we seen a member of the British royal family undressed. Well, not outside the Wigmore Club, we haven't. <laughs> What's it's the true. Wigmore Club now? Major Ron Ferguson was caught going there for um, an afternoon's relief. Ah. It's a laboratory then, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Yes, it is, Stephen. That's a different yes. sort of relief, I believe. Mm. Depends uh, on the lavatory, I always find. <laughs> <laughs> if I could just move swiftly on, um, <laughs> which uh, coital deviance brings us panting to the end of this uh, faithless round. And the story so far is that uh, both teams are accumulating nicely, uh, currently sharing, as they do a fulsome eight. And so we slide down the chimney of time and schooled ourselves on the ashes of history, pausing only to nibble on the mince pie of yesteryear. <laughs> and uh, what's more, it's our archive round. Two Wipe pieces ourselves of... with a towel of overstatement. <laughs> <laughs> Two pieces of extremely modern history from a recent American election. Ian and Stephen, what happened next? Oh. Is that going to go with the trend of these other states down here, these four states that have gone so far for Bill Clinton? Only West Virginia was one that he held from Dukakis' time in 18... There, there has a state gone. Well, now that, according to the colour I have there, is a state gone for Perot. Well, I was watching this uh, in, in bed, and I got up to get a glass of water, and I fell over. That's what happened next there. <laughs> I stubbed my toe. Um, um, but I think my, my friend knows. I was watching it not in bed. Um, no, you were next, weren't you? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's... Um, it's the, uh, I was just waiting my turn. Yeah. <laughs> they all I, I, they, they went yellow, didn't they? OK, let's uh, take a proverbial gander. There's the two main candidates at the top, Bush and uh, Clinton, and here are the states now coming in very quickly in completely the wrong colours. <laughs> Yes, it is. It's the BBC election computer predicting a Perot landslide. <laughs> Ross, uh, Ross Perot, of course, in the end won no states at all, possibly because he cited his hates as uh, starting with alcohol, running through to blue shirts, beards and homosexuals. Must have gone down well in the Navy. <laughs> or uh, or not, a, by the sounds a, of things. What's a blue shirt? It's a shirt which is blue. <laughs> Unlike a suit that is brown. <laughs> mm. Very, very dissimilar mm. to that. What's yeah. a homosexual? 
<laughs> About ten bob a week, I think. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> It's a long time since you've been out in the game of Goodness me. You've been no, I get block bookings. Oh, yeah. Phew. Yeah. Paul, Paul and Frank, uh, we move on now. Two pastures identical. Uh, what happened after this? And thank you for that Ocala welcome. And let me tell you, coming from the great Hoosier state of go. Indiana, where basketball is king, is this when he said that uh, one in the hand is worth two in Mrs. Bush? So... <laughs> um, I don't think he ever said that, did he? He didn't say that. No, you but... You should uh... see how he spells Clinton. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's, uh, let's peer briefly. I feel right at home in this gymnasium. <laughs> Yes. That's the most amusing clip you could find. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Which electoral nostalgia marks an end to this transatlantic That's round, it. and the uh, tragedy <laughs> would appear to be waiting in the wings for Paul and Frank, who have eight, while uh, Ian and Stephen uh, march onwards with ten. And so, uh, stand aside now as we make way for our Yuletide Odd One Out round. Four sane and sober public figures. Which one is the Brian Clough? Paul, <laughs> four uh, manifestations of loveliness for you. Highlight, Desert Orchid, Princess Anne, <laughs> and Camilla Parker Bowles. Who, who, is, who is Highlight? Uh, that's Prince Charles' horse, polo horse. Well, Prince Charles has rode them all apart from... Um... <laughs> Get out! Get out! Get out! Go on! Uh, Three um, of them um, have got very heavy breathing on the phone. Apart from... It, this is, it's, uh, it's very close. It's actually uh, Desert Orchid, as all the others annually receive Christmas cards from Prince Charles, but you were virtually there. Um, Charles, somewhat bizarrely, sends a Christmas card what? every year to his horse, uh, Princess Anne. Uh, sorry, to his horse. Um, <laughs> Princess Anne also gets one from him, as does Camilla Parker Bowles, uh, whom he also sends a card to. Uh, despite uh, Charles' reticence... I hope you're going to prove that, Angus. Mm, in court, I shall do. Uh, despite Charles' reticence... I wouldn't uh, wear that bow tie, because jewellery's going <laughs> off. <laughs> Things like that. <laughs> and the brown suit. Uh, despite Charles' reticence... It'll be brown uh, by the door. time you get there. <laughs> Oh Frank, four blasts from the past for you. Noel Gordon, <laughs> oh, lovely Noel. Humphrey Bogart, Lou Grade, and Jesus. Ah, <laughs> oh, the famous Islamic prophet you're about to say, Angus. Mm, I wasn't, oddly enough. Good. But I will do if you Jesus want. Jesus have a very, very small mouth, or is it just this picture? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Jesus having just eaten a lemon. Is that <laughs> I've got it. Humphrey Bogart was born on Christmas Day, as was mm. Noel Gordon, as was Jesus. But Lou Grade probably wasn't. Lou Grade's uh, the second dog that he and his wife ever had was called Morton. That's right. <laughs> yeah. That's right. And mm. there was Humphrey Bogart. No. His aunt was called Mortimer. Yes. Right. One of and the disciples Norm was called Norm Mortimer. Gordon. <laughs> he didn't yeah, yeah. turn up much, though. No. So. Um, That's right. Mortimer the absent, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. He's in the apocrypha, though. <laughs> 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 I'm, uh, I'm going to have to drag you back to Frank's answer, which was uh, almost entirely right. I'll give you one. The reason was right, the person was wrong. It's actually Jesus, because all the others were born on Christmas Day. Uh, scholars estimate the actual birth date of Christ as January the 6th. Who are these scholars? And I dispute the uh. fact that he was born on January the 6th. Because to be really? honest, they're in the minority. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 It's just some nutter in the office, isn't it? <laughs> no, it's true. December the 25th was actually a pagan festival, which Do they then scholars turned have into their Christmas tree up Day. on January the 6th, then? <laughs> Everyone else is back at work, and they're the scholars, sadly uh, giving presents to each other. Yeah, I bet they have a quiet drink on Christmas Day as well. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah it's, it's mm. these scholars getting two drinks for the price of one, that's what I mean. <laughs> two lots of presents. Noel Gordon was uh, so named because she was born on Christmas Day. Good job she wasn't born on 31st of May or she'd have been called Spring Bank. <laughs> uh, 
And uh, Lou Grade, born on December the 25th, apparently married the first person he ever saw on TV. Just as well we didn't all do that, or I'd now be married to Peter Glaze. <laughs> A man who made a living out of going, and then he died. In yeah. Fact. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's, oh rather, well. that's rather tragic. Never mind. Worked on for another two years, though. <laughs> <laughs> Some say it was an better. improvement. Yeah, <laughs> I think it was. Oh. Uh, Stephen, another descending mm. scale of well, uh, gorgeousness oh. for you. Uh, Jesus again oh. gets a lot of publicity around this time of year. Menachem Begin, yeah. an olive tree, and for the last time, <laughs> Robert Maxwell. <laughs> They're all got songs. Eh? Jesus wants me for a sunbeam. Um, Menachem Begin wants me Begin, for a terrorist. Begin the Begin, I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, is um, oh, it's it's like that. that old joke. Is it about um, you know why did Popeye hit? Um, Jesus or something because he was going to Mount Olive. Is, is that the one? <laughs> <laughs> um, something about Mount Olive it and is very close, dying yes. on Mount Olive or mm. it's, being it's buried. About being buried yes. on the Mount Maxwell of Olives. Maxwell was buried on the Mount of Olives. But isn't that wood floats and that Jesus walked on water and that uh, Robert Maxwell did neither? <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. Of course, what the fact that? that one of them's a tree, we all seem to have overlooked. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> that's it! <laughs> It, it was uh, right there on the line there. Thank God you're here, Frank. Yeah. Um, no, well, I will give it to, uh, to Ian and Stephen. The, the answer is Jesus again, as he's the only one not to be <laughs> the interred. The only one who's just eaten a lemon. <laughs> 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 not to be interred in the holy burial ground of the Mount of Olives. Uh, Maxwell was buried at the top of the Mount of Olives uh, in order to make his journey to heaven shorter. Little did he know he was actually making his journey slightly longer. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, finally, Ian, for fr friendly faces for you, uh, Roger the Hamster, Jeremy the Gerbil, Simon the Rabbit, and Vinnie the Rat. Is it that Simon the Rabbit has never met Richard Gere? Hmm. <laughs> it's, it's well spotted, but um, it's a very not actually a dramatically clue. lit photo, isn't mm. it? Vinnie the Rat. It's got mm. him for a sort of I've never with the Beatles look. <laughs> He's only professionally yeah. dumb. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. They're, They're all trying yeah. to get into my house at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> it's Roger the Hamster, obviously, as he's the only one using a pseudonym. Uh, <laughs> it's, um, Roger the Hamster is a sport, isn't it? Rather than... <laughs> His real name being uh, Graham the Hamster, of course. So, uh, at the end of... Oh, dear. <laughs> is that it? Can we have some <clears throat> explanation? Um, the explanation is basically that we're just wasting your time. Yeah. Uh, so, Angus the Pratt is... Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Roger, in fact, is oh, his, right. uh, his stage name. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, at the end of all that extremely dubious information, the current state of play is that, uh, well, all is virtually lost for uh, Paul and Frank, who have nine, whilst uh, Ian and Stephen are laughing all the way to the Alliance and Leicester with 12. So, with everything to play for, except any form of reward, we uh, enter our final missing words round, two potentially amusing sets of half-formed headlines. What is their completed state? Uh, Paul and Frank, your turn to uh, uh, cast your minds back over the past year, beginning with... Jason, I don't dye my hair, I use what? It's, a, it's the same lemon, isn't it? He uses That's lemon what it juice. is. Uh, he squeezes lemon, lemon juice. What? Well, it it is. Go, isn't it? Is it frozen yak's urine? Oh, it's lemon <laughs> juice. Uh, I'm not going back to Blue Peter, says who? Uh, wife of Smurf. Mm. <laughs> 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 it takes a while, but it's Is it uh, uh, John Noakes? Uh, yes, Noakes is the right answer. Next, Ike. My lover isn't pregnant, she's what? Very fat. <laughs> My lover isn't pregnant, she's not further. very fussy. Mm. See that one? <laughs> <laughs> Volcano is the utterly plausible answer. <laughs> and lastly, the monarch offers his country's freedom and independence to Germany. Is it that one? Is it credit card facilities? <laughs> <laughs> apologies? I'll give you one for apologies, Paul, because uh, regrets is in fact the answer. So it's Ian and Stephen to stand by for yours. Uh, Madonna in what at Tesco? Pick and mix. <laughs> <laughs> Shelf next to other Pop Tarts. <laughs> <laughs> um.
Is it cucumber fracas? <laughs> That's very nice. Have you had that cucumber? It's nice, though. It's lovely. It's like if, you put, if you put kiwi fruit it's around the outside lovely, of the yeah. dish, it's Yes, if I could just uh, interrupt. Uh, the Good answer point. is ban, in fact. Uh, next, there's no disguising it. Fergie's on what again? Is it the piece? <laughs> Holiday? Yes, it's very oh, good. Oh, on well holes. Oh, so the right oh so good. in there. Uh, next, angle. Mella in what for five years? Is Mella it brown suit? Mella. <laughs> Uh, no, cold is in fact the answer. Mm. And finally, well, pressure means. mounts on major to change what? Just no. full stop. <laughs> full stop. Pressure mounts on major to change. change. Tack to change policy. the way he washes his uh, face forever. <laughs> 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 is uh, equally untrue. To change um, fibre. No, I think Paul said policy a while yeah, ago. Uh, economic policy is the right oh. answer. Uh, which majestic end to an otherwise enjoyable series means that, sad to say, this week's roasted turkeys are Ian and Stephen with oh. 12, and uh, this week's Christmas crackers are Paul and Frank with 18. <laughs> So, 100 shares in ICI to our winners, and 100 shares in TVAM to our losers. <laughs> uh, and uh, the overall winner, well, is neither of them, in fact, because uh, we've ended up over, over the whole series as five games apiece, which is a fitting, if dull, way to end. Why uh, don't you have an odd number of programmes, you idiot? <laughs> <laughs> So before we uh, deck the halls with empty lager cans, a brief stab at our seasonal capturing competition. Uh, Ian and Stephen, this was, I think, yours. Mm. Orkney social workers round up suspects in Oxford Street. <laughs> it, um... <laughs> EC Santa Mountain. <laughs> <laughs> Paul and Frank. I thought you were a made up fictional character, says Father Christmas, do I? <laughs> <laughs> I suppose a Santa sandwich is out of the question. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> is it, uh, I always end up with men that only come once a year. <laughs> and when they do, it's down the chimney. <laughs> but they, yeah, but they, do, they yeah. do fill your stockings. <laughs> <laughs> On which uh, festive note, we say thank you to our <laughs> guests, uh, Ian Hislop and Stephen Fry, Paul Merton and Frank Skinner. And so, until the summer, I leave you with the news that at last, the proceeds of Geoffrey Archer's £53 million Curd Aid appeal have arrived in Kurdistan. <laughs> Uh, George Best admits that the days when the world's most beautiful women flock to his side are drawing to a close. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, Prince Charles gets to grips with life as a single man. <laughs> For the same price as a day's BBC, you can buy a fairy light for your Christmas tree.